Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening. First tonight, the Prime Minister has announced a $140 million cash splash for Tasmanian renewable energy projects. Scott Morrison putting pen to paper to further fund a controversial connector as he continued his pre-election tour of the state's north and northwest. The signing over of funds intended to supercharge Australia's grid. The PM granting $75 million to further planning and development of Marinus Link as he toured the Devil's Gate power station at Barrington. You've got to generate the power here in Tasmania and you've got to get it across the strait. For years the project has been the topic of conversation between state and federal governments. But a final investment decision isn't expected until 2024. And we still don't know who will foot the $3.5 billion bill or how. We have private investors knocking on our door right now. Um, what this uh, uh, decision and outcome today signals to them um, is that this is going to go ahead. Labor has welcomed the funds but wants more details and says this announcement was nothing more than a campaign photo op. The budget's not even a week old. You know, this major uh, electricity program should have been in the budget. $65 million is also being allocated to the Battery of the Nation project. The money will fund upgrades at the Taralea Hydro Power Station and further planning towards doubling its output. Taralea is, is an 80-ish year old plant. It's an iconic station. It's uh, an asset that, that we're very proud that is, is part of the portfolio. Scott Morrison and Anthony Albanese will be on the tools in Tasmania over the next few weeks, looking for a bump in the polls. Bass was the most marginal electorate in the country three years ago, while Lyons looks to be a key battleground for Scott Morrison as Susie Bauer spent the past two days in tow. He only is interested in seats he can win or seats he wants to hold, and that's all he's interested in. But how many times has Anthony Albanese visited the south of the state since borders opened? Once. The same number as Scott Morrison. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A bushwalking adventure with a friend has ended in tragedy for a 19-year-old who fell from cliffs at Cape Deslax near Clifton Beach yesterday afternoon. Emergency services were called to the scene shortly after three, but they were unable to revive the teenager. He died while receiving medical treatment. So the man was located at the base of a cliff face um, by members of the Tasmania Police Rescue Helicopter. Our initial inquiries indicate that the man has walked uh, close to the cliff edge, um, unfortunately slipping, um, which has resulted in him falling. A coronal investigation will now be launched into the incident. There's been a drop in Tasmanian COVID numbers overnight. 1,683 new infections were reported, more than 200 less than yesterday. One person remains in the ICU and there are currently more than 13,000 active cases. Tasmania's tourism sector is preparing for a bumper Easter long weekend, providing a much-needed boost for businesses. While the cost of seafood has spiked nationally, local fishmongers say there's plenty of catch to go around. It's the time of year when chocolate is on the menu for people of all ages and John Zito's store is busy preparing for Easter. We're flat out. Three chocolatiers are trying very hard to get you know Easter um, production ahead of schedule but it's been very difficult. The Hobart based trader says European supply chains have been hampered by the recent conflict in Ukraine. Trying to maintain our current price structure but just some ingredients in the last week have gone up not five percent not ten sixty percent because it's all coming out of Europe. It's not just the cost of chocolate that spiked, Tassie seafood is also in demand. A kilo of salmon has jumped $10 higher across many parts of the country, but local fishmongers haven't been affected. There hasn't been a, any price lift on our fish that we catch, so the blue eye, the ling, the gem fish is all staying around the same price. Um, salmon's gone up just one or two dollars for us. Tasmanians are still being urged to get orders in early. Uh, absolutely, but at the same time we're going to have lots of fish on hand so there shouldn't be any worry about running out. 
The Easter long weekend is a crucial time for Tasmanian businesses as they prepare for winter and despite a noticeable absence of overseas visitors, the tourism sector is expecting a positive season ahead. This year international is going to be substantially less uh, but the domestic demand is really high so we're expecting a really bumper uh, few weeks. Sweet relief for traders after two years of hardship. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Labor has written to the state's economic regulator requesting a halt to any increase in the cost of power and water as Tasmanian families battle cost of living pressures. Shadow Energy Minister Dean Winter is calling on the state government to intervene. For a lot of people that'll be $400 over four years, increases in, in costs. And then we've got Aurora Energy now planning to um, add the cost of the Aurora Plus app to every single Tasmanian business and household. In a statement, a government spokesperson has denied households will face a $400 Taswater price hike and the final decision is determined by the regulator. In the NBL soccer, a trip to face Olympia proved no challenge for Devonport, who demolished the Warriors 4-0. The strikers broke through at the end of the first half for their opener, but it was a much easier affair in the second as they piled on the goals. Roberto Garrido bagged a hat-trick in the rout. In Saturday's other game, Glenorchy drew one all with South Hobart, but remain on top of the ladder. The Jack Jumpers slim finals ambitions have taken a hit, suffering a comprehensive defeat at the hands of the inform Sydney Kings. A loud home crowd didn't deter the Kings shooters, who made the most of their opportunities, blowing the local NBL outfit off the floor. Sinking the first points on the board, it was clear Sydney shooters weren't here for a holiday. They're in trouble. That is one player you don't want to hit the first basket. Determined to put on a show at My State Bank Arena, the Jack Jumpers slowly found their momentum in front of a home crowd. Knee surgery, but he plays with so much energy you wouldn't know it. Chasing a win to stay in the NBL finals hunt, but it was the away side wreaking havoc on their defensive structure. Net. Come on, Shane. The hottest team in the league has started exactly that way. Hey, hey, relax. Get a breath. But we got to get it on the defense end. We got to get back in transition. All right, lock in. Come on, together. One, two, three, together. McIntosh stepped up late in the first, wasting no time coming off the bench with this three pointer. Five off the bench. Generally, when the import comes out here and plays this well. Although it wasn't the sign of things to come, Sydney coming out strong in the second half. The attack right at Steindl, goes past him, leads it up with the number oh, nice. right, the lead is 20. Oh, While the Tassie boys struggle to shoot deep when it matters most. As we see McVeigh let one slip as well. The Kings royally dominated the first half to see the Jack Jumpers trailing behind by more than 20 points. Incredible start by the team that come in with a nine game winning streak while the Jack Jumpers who have been very hot themselves up the fifth. The onslaught only continued so to the aggression inside the arc. Maker off the bench straight into the action offence. There were glimmers of hope for the home side as their defensive pressure forced mistakes from the Sydney attack. Oh, you think, oh, they're just coughing and sploding. Although it wasn't enough to stop them in their tracks, their shooters in fine form. Shane, everybody calm down. That's how you take the air out of about 5,000 Tasmanians. Entering the fourth with a large margin, the roar of the fans couldn't beat down Sydney's strong hands. Absolutely rejected two in a row. by Xavier Cooks. It ends up in Steindl's hand, couldn't get it to go. McIntosh was doing all he could to keep the dream alive. 25. Coach, can't make it any simpler for you. But in the final minutes, it was clear the Kings were about to take home their 10th straight win. Kings. 103-83, they were dominant. From go to woe. A tough night for the Jack Jumpers, who will now turn their focus to Friday, where they'll face off against the Taipans. Obviously disappointed in what we did today with knowing what was on the line. Uh, disappointed for our fans that saw that. But we got to move on. Grey Sevens, Seven, Tasmania News. Good evening, 21 in Devonport today, Launceston and Burnie 20, 17 in Hobart. 19 across Strawn and Grove, St Helens 17 and Smithton 21. On the close-up, low-level cloud about the east and south with a band of middle-level cloud crossing the state. Further out, cloud associated with thunderstorm activity is visible over southern Queensland. 
Tomorrow a high is centred to the northwest of Tasmania with a ridge south of the state. South to southeasterly winds tomorrow 20 to 30 knots, swells up to 2 metres in the west and south and reaching 1 metre in the north. A strong wind warning is current for the central north, Banks Strait, Franklin Sound and Flinders Island. Tomorrow's forecast now, a shower or two in Hobart, Dover 19, cloudy in Ouse. In the north, Launceston, partly cloudy, 23 across Devonport and Scottsdale. Burnie tomorrow 24, 18 in Strawn, Stanley, partly cloudy. St Helens and Ross 22 and showers easing in Swansea. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Tuesday showers about the southwest and northeast, Wednesday showers about the north fine elsewhere, and Thursday fine with light winds across the state. Capital cities 27 and cloudy in Perth tomorrow, Adelaide 24 and partly cloudy in Canberra. And currently Hobart 14 and cloudy, Launceston 16, Devonport 16 and partly cloudy. And Lou, it looks like we'll be getting some, some warmer weather towards the end of the week after a wet couple of days. I look forward to that warmer weather. Thank you for that, Jackie. And that's all your news for your Sunday evening. Thanks so much for joining us, Stu and Kim and the team from tomorrow. Good night.